An unfortunate truth of the human condition is how limited we are in our experiences. No two people will see a sunset and remember it in exactly the same way. Of course, the explanation for that hinges on the fact that subjective experience is quite impermeable. It is, after all, subjective and not objective. But it is also true that the external world is constantly in a state of change. Therefore, one could even argue that two people being incapable of remembering a sunset the same way is not as important as the fact that two people cannot in fact see the same sunset at all. The human pursuit to capture images of the world has been endless. From cave paintings thousands of years ago to photography in more recent times, mirroring external reality has inspired awe and technological innovation. Despite their differences, if there is one thing that ties all these attempts together, it is their expansion of what we normally consider to be the horizons of experience. This video explores how perception and memory of the external world are augmented by documentary cinema, and how by integrating one's subjective experience with the creative aspects of a film, the notion of reality itself is expanded. The need to leave proof of one's existence behind after death is a testament to our positive valuation of the material world. The way we accomplish this is through art, and one of the most interesting art forms is cinema, specifically documentary cinema. John Grierson defined documentaries as the creative treatment of actuality. The elements of that definition are individually necessary, but jointly insufficient to capture the essence of documentaries. Documentaries certainly creatively treat actuality, but they are not limited by it. In fact, they open up the possibility of expanded realities. Realities that have manifestations beyond pure sensory experience, but are nevertheless experienced by the senses. The qualities of such expanded realities are abstract and often purely mental, which is why film, as a medium, has the power to transcend materiality and leave its mark on the deepest recesses of the mind. Take memory, for example. Memory serves a vital function in culture and evolution. Despite its imperfections, it can exercise emotion and reason, two crucial aspects of cognition. The power of memory is why feelings like nostalgia are so decisive in shaping behavior and also why we hold a special place in our hearts for home videos. The fiction film cannot match the documentary in this regard, for it is entirely scripted and much more lacking in objective correlative. Now, Combine this with the fact that photography and film are arts of preservation. At their core, they capture, in the words of Karl Plantinga, traces of the world. They help people remember and are much more resistant to erasure. With all this in mind, it is time we look at exactly what makes documentaries unique within the larger cinematic universe. The first film that can be used to understand expanded realities is Gottfried Radio Square Anaskazi, a poetic film it uses time-lapse, low-angle shots, slow motion, and juxtaposition, to name a few, to paint a picture of the world that is founded in sense perception, but simultaneously much more. Koyana Skatsi changes the way we normally look at things, to create an interpretative portrayal of the external world. For example, this shot of cars on a highway makes them look like miniatures, like toys that the human race plays with. Their integration with the background and with the rest of the film makes it seem like the whole world is one machine, with constantly changing parts. Or, how about this shot of corporate offices? The glass skyscrapers don't stand out like a saw, but rather blend in with the rest of the scene, as if they were meant to be there. Along the same lines, and with clever use of juxtaposition, Koyaniskatsi also shows the inextricable link between humans and their inventions. Sausages and people are compared, and the movement of the latter eerily mimics the mechanized production of the former. Humans are microcosms of the world they build. In this way, Koyanis Katsi expands our immediate remembrance of the spaces we inhabit and of the planet we live on. It expands our reality. Speaking of memory, documentaries do not just serve as surreal registers through which we can look at our time using different lenses. They also function as dioramas of different times altogether. In Night and Fog, 
Alan Renee uses authentic images of the Shoah and a tightly structured narrative to tell the haunting story of a generation. Such films act as museums of memory and enable the preservation of significant moments in history so that future generations may never forget the atrocities of the past. Night and Fog expands reality by keeping in the public awareness things that ought not to be forgotten. Of course, the same function is performed by literature, but what literature lacks is the visual and therefore deeply effective appeal of cinema. Even if someone was not present at an event, that event may still exist in their reality through documentary cinema. Although we experience the world physically, our interpretation of those experiences and our ability to transform them into art is what lends a sense of shared being to an otherwise individualistic existence. The one artistic medium that can be said to fulfill this function is documentary cinema. Amazingly, it broadens our horizons no matter how small a screen we watch it on. Ultimately, through the documentary, we combine the tangible and the intangible the material and the abstract, traces and memory, to push the boundaries of perception and craft our own expanded realities.